Next up, we have Wiem, and I believe her first conference talk since returning to our community here. So we're very excited to have her. Thank you. Thank She's you. going to be walking us through building an application using some of these lovely Zio libraries that we've been hearing about. Thanks. So, in this talk, I will show uh, uh, an application that I've implemented using different Zio libraries that are um, uh, compatible with the latest uh, release candidate uh, of Zio 2. And Book Your Spot and Zio is the idea of this application, which consists of uh, client and server. And the client is implemented using HTML and JavaScript. It's a simple web application. And the server is using Scala. This application will enable the user to book a ticket. So at the day of the event or the conference, we will see them and uh, they will check in. So the first step, the client will uh, display a form that the participant will uh, uh, fill and uh, once it will be submitted, this form, the server, um, okay, the server will expose end, uh, endpoints and uh, that the client can uh, interact with. And once the form will be submitted, it will send a post HTTP request to the server and it will, uh, the server will store the information for uh, the participant. And it will generate a QR code for the participant and give it back to the client as a response. So the participant will uh, save the QR code and uh, at the day of the event, um, the participant will present the QR code via the client and the client will send a GET HTTP request to the server and we will look up if the QR code is valid and uh, that also the participant ID or the participant exists in the database. If everything is fine, we will return success, otherwise it will fail. So our focus here in this application is on the implementation on the server that will expose HTTP endpoints, persist the information of the participant, generate the QR code and validate it. This, we are going to use different Zio libraries in the context of this application. And for, our, for the HTTP server, um, we are going to use Zio HTTP. And for the database, we are going to use a Postgres and a Zio Quill that will uh, enable us to write uh, the database queries in uh, a Scala uh, code and a nice fashion. And uh, to generate and check the QR code, we are going to use a library called Zsync. While it is starts with Z, it will work with Zio. So uh, um, it is uh, like a li uh, an open source library and uh, that supports Java, and uh, uh, yeah, we'll wrap it uh, into Zio so we can uh, handle errors, etc. And our models will be the request and the participant. So, uh, for uh, because we need also uh, to make sure that all the fields of the participants, uh, like type safety for these uh, models. Um, so we will use Zio Prelude for that. And to process these requests from uh, JSON and uh, um, decode it to our model or for the participant when we will return it and we will encode it uh, to JSON, we are going to use Zio JSON, which is uh, supported also by uh, like, uh, Zio HTTP work very well with it. And for uh, Zio Quill, when we will store the data and uh, get, get them, uh, we will need also to have um, encoders and uh, decoders. 
uh, Zioquil has uh, this, uh, so we are going to use uh, uh, the encoder, encoder and decoder from uh, Zioquil. So now let's have a look to the code, how it was, uh, how it is. And okay, is it yeah? Let's start from the configuration. I, we are going to use zero config for the configuration. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, for uh, this, we are going to turn this into case, uh, case classes, and uh, we are going to have this app, okay, app config that will regroup all of these objects and. Um, we will uh, create the layer for our uh, application using uh, this uh, configuration. And for this, we need we need to uh, to get we need to get uh, uh, this we need to get this configuration from uh, uh, Rendezvous. It's the, like the name of the application. Uh, we will get this. Configuration from yeah, it is clear, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we will uh, fetch the configuration from uh, from uh, this root, and uh, we define the descriptor as uh, app config. So this will give us uh, uh, we will uh, uh, get our configuration, and we define the configuration layer uh, this way. Um, with the app config, which is the whole configuration, and then with each uh, object that it contains, it is like it is a nice way to do it this way. Like we define, we combine all of them into layers, so we will be able to um, use uh, every part of the config in every uh, uh, whenever we need it. And we don't need to pass the whole app config to, for example, verify the QR code or something so this is a way to do it and uh, this is how we can build it uh, using a, a zero config there is like a, a syntax implicit uh, yeah syntax here uh, zero config syntax that we can just uh, reuse the app config layer and then uh, take each field from that and for the model we have this request So the request has name and email, and the name would be like, it wouldn't be a simple uh, string because there is like some conditions to be valid. It shouldn't contain numbers and it shouldn't be empty, etc. And the email also, it should be validated. So here we use a Zio prelude. And using Zio prelude uh, to make a smart constructor, let's say. We define, we define this object name and we extend a new type and like the name is of type string. So we want to wrap uh, this new type. Uh, we will wrap this string and we define the assertion. What, uh, how we will validate, we want to validate this name and we want uh, we want it to, uh, to be validated only when we pass uh, just letters. And for the email, it's the same. But it sounds complicated with like this regex because, um, yeah, it's copy-paste for sure. Uh, but um, there are some libraries that will uh, like provide validators. It could uh, be better to um, to uh, enable validation, uh, external validation in uh, Zio Prelude, but I think there is a uh, there is work uh, in progress in Zio Prelude that will allow uh, that. And uh, let's get back to the request. So we need the decoder for the request. We use a G, uh, JSON decoder, and for this we need also the decoder for. Um, the name and the, the email to be able to uh, to make this work, and this is why here in the 
um, in the object uh, we define here encoder uh, and decoder. We needed the encoder because in the participant here we will have uh, these fields and we will uh, uh, return it later. Uh, so we need the encoder here. And uh, for also, um, uh, this is uh, the encoder and the decoder for uh, the um, database because we are going to store the participant and we need, uh, we need to uh, let ZeoQuil understand that the name is a string and uh, the UUID, uh, the participant ID is of type UUID and um, uh, the email is of type string. So we, uh, we define this using um, mapped encoding from ZeoQuil and uh, this we define from which type to, uh, to which type and uh, that we want to convert. And here is the, the quill. Uh, let's see now how uh, the implementation of uh, the database. The context, we need to define the context and we are going to use the Postgres. And we specify this because ZeoQuill supports uh, Postgres and uh, which format we, uh, like the naming format we have. And uh, we specify the part of our configuration that will describe the data source here. And because we are going also to use uh, uh, Flyway for uh, my, uh, migrating the database here, just a definition that we later will need to create a table and uh, because we define here the query. But let's, let's go quickly to see uh, how we define uh, the, the database. Uh, like we need to save uh, the participant and to get it by ID. And using ZeoQuill, it is very nice syntax and very simple. We, we need to get this uh, context and provide it here. And we query the participant when we want to save uh, the participant. We only uh, need to call insert value and we lift it to uh, this participant. And this. Um, we look to the encoder and the decoder that we have defined and um, yeah, it will uh, uh, insert a new participant in our database and forget by ID, it will filter uh, the, uh, by ID and get it. And for a QR code, it is uh, quite uh, like, it will use uh, the other, the library Zxing and uh, it, uh, we, I wrap it everything into task to be able to catch errors and handle them. And the main service that we that will help us to create a new participant and to get to get it by QR code is uh, define it as a, also a layer a participant service, and uh, it will interact with the database. And for a creation, it will uh, generate. A QR code using uh, the QR uh, code service and um, yeah and here the layer uh, that we are going to use it will require uh, the database manager and the QR code service and we use it here random because the ID uh, will be uh, gener uh, generated like when we want to create a new uh, participant, we will automatically take the name and the email from the request and generate a new uh, ID. So we need random. And everything is transparent. Like if we want to test it, we can, uh, like it's uh, a functional code. Like everything, we can uh, test it uh, in uh, um, an easy way. Yeah, for Zio HTTP, this is like, um, and these are the endpoints, the post call and the get call. And uh, here we will uh, parse the, the uh, participants and then we just call add participant. And it's nice syntax here. We call the participant service 
Um, and because we extend uh, accessible from uh, zero, zero accessible, it will allow us to call it in this syntax instead of doing zero dot uh, service, uh, um, participant service, and etc. And uh, yeah, it's the same for get. And now uh, the latest step uh, is to show you the fancy, <laughs> the fancy. Uh, Client. <laughs> and, um, ah, it is uh, already. Okay, I run, uh, I have the server here. Okay, so we want to, uh, let's say, we put invalid, something invalid, invalid. It's valid email, but invalid name. It will return a bad <laughs> request. And, uh, and if it is valid, the name valid and email valid, it will return also an error. But if everything is valid, um, it will return a QR code. And we can hear if I want to check in, I can pass the QR code. I wanted to do it with camera, but oh, it's a lot of work. So, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it says welcome we am. And if I, let's say, I want to, um, let's clean the database and uh, make that QR code invalid. it will fail. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is the application and that's it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and I will try to uh, publish this project if you are interested about the code. And uh, yeah, maybe I will write a blog post about it. And yeah, happy to see you all. <laughs>